my childhood. Thank you for listening to Ruin My Childhood, the podcast where we decide if some things are better off left in the past. I'm Mike. And I'm Kat. And today, what are we going to be talking about, Miss Kat? Doug. Ooh. What do, you, what do you remember about Doug? I remember that it was pretty chill. I liked watching it. It wasn't gross. <laughs> which I appreciated about yeah. that cartoon, especially around that time, you know, with the Ren and Stimpies and all the monsters life. of the world. Yeah, that kind of stuff. There were a lot of um, musical cues that were used throughout the entire series, and I really liked that. God, there's just so much about this show. Like, I, I probably have a good, you know, nine or ten episodes completely memorized. Yeah, like, so this show... It's my understanding, like, I know it got bought out by Disney at some point, and then it changed over to ABC when they made a movie, and then it moved to channel, a different channel. And there was only, like, two seasons on Nickelodeon, but they played them over and over right. and over and over and over again. So they're just kind of, like, ingrained into our memories. Right, because we've literally seen each episode at least 30 times. Right. I don't personally think I remember, like, nine or ten episodes, like, verbatim, but there's just so many little, like... Little things I remember, like, I remember, like, banging on a trash can right. when they have, like, their own little band and then uh, the beats. I love the episode where they go on a family road trip and they're stopping at all these weird places and Judy wants to stop at Bly the Field. Oh, <laughs> Judy, the little beatnik, Judy. older sister. Um, obviously, you know, all the friends, Roger Klotz, Patty Mayonnaise. Ah. <laughs> Like, I can't remember, like, an entire plot of an episode, but I just remember things like there's an episode where Doug gets a pimple, so he wears a Phantom of the Opera mask. A, where There's one where Judy has to teach him how to parallel park, or she has to learn how to parallel park so he can go on a trip or something like that, and she can drive. There's an episode where he goes to stay with his grandparents for the summer, and he comes home, and he's fat. I don't remember <laughs> and he that. He steps out of the car, That's and they're funny. like, "You're here. You're home. You're huge." That's and then he hilarious. has to go on a diet, and it's ridiculous. Um, I remember. I don't remember his name, but he had like the neighbor who always had like all these gadgets, and like very expensive. Yes. Uh, I mean, there's just a lot of little things. Quail Man. How can you forget Quail Man? Of course. I mean, I feel like we could go on for half an hour just naming things that we remember. So I think we should maybe just go to our listeners. Beats are nature's candy. Beats? Oh, my God. <laughs> they constantly talk about beats. I still love beats. Thank you, Is Doug. that why you like beats? Because of the show? Probably, realistically. All right. Well, let's go find out what our listeners remember. Do you have any comments? I do. Honestly, I have a ton of comments about it. Um, but Lauren4004 said, How weird it was that Skeeter's parents named him Mosquito, then named their second child Dale. <laughs> yeah, that is a weird one. Um, I got Julie Mendez says, I still get killer tofu stuck in my head from time to time. I also oh, loved you. the dramatic older sister Judy as I was a dramatic older sister myself. I love it. Judy's the best. You got another one? Sirens and Seaweed says, liver and onions. I <laughs> vaguely remember that. Like, there's, like, an episode where he doesn't like it, but he's going to have to eat it for some reason. Right, because it's disgusting. Um, Wreck My Podcast said, I remember that the theme song is the Mozart Symphony number 40 of all 90s theme songs. <laughs> it really is. You know exactly yep. what's happening. You know when that little string is going to tap Porkchop's bum? He's going to go, rap. <laughs> yeah it's pretty much pounded into our memories uh yasu yuki fujita said i love this show the pizza making episode do you remember pizza making i don't episode? remember a pizza making episode maybe it was from the disney era i definitely only watched the one nickelodeon ones the, the era of which we do not speak no <laughs> patty got an undercut who does that oh no patty I'm pretty sure the voice of Patty is the woman from Orange is the New Black. She is. Landa Verde 000 said, maybe it's triple zero. I need more <laughs> allowance. Oh, you, you. Why? Why, why on do. earth would you abandon the proper cadence when saying that? I don't know. <laughs> I need more allowance. <laughs> oh, you, you. You had one job. Thank <laughs> <laughs> Um, should we just jump into it? No, I've got I've got one special one that I want to read. I really want to read this one. It's very heartfelt. I think this is the most like sincere comment that we've we've had, and I really kind of want to share this with our listeners. So, one of our listeners, Nathaniel Hope, said, "I moved around a lot as a kid. My parents were in the military, and sometimes it was hard to cope. 
Then comes a show about a kid who just moved to a new town and had to figure out how to make friends. I got hooked because I could relate so much to Doug and his world. Doug's vivid imagination while using his journal to figure out this thing called life was inspiring to watch. I love the show so much that I used to dress like him, too. <laughs> sweater vest? <laughs> sweater vest, green sweater vest and khaki shorts. But no, that's that's awesome that this show like helped you out as a kid and cope with the world. So I'm, I'm really glad that this show helped you, man. And with that, I think we should uh, just go watch the show. <laughs> All right, so we just watched uh, Doug's uh, about three episodes from we season one Doug's? and two. We just watched Doug, <laughs> a couple episodes from season one and two. Uh, none of this Disney BS. And I was delightfully impressed at how much this held up. This show is hilarious. It really is. It's really good. Um, so the, we watched the pilot. We always watch the first episode when we cover a TV show. And this was a, a half hour one. Yeah. All the other episodes are two, you know, 10 to 15 minute epi- mini episodes. And this first one was called Doug Bags the Nematode. What do you what do you remember about this or what what happened this episode, honey? Um, well it's basically the beginning of everything because it's setting up that Doug just moved into town. He's the new kid. He meets Skeeter in this episode. There's a cow there when they're unpacking. He meets meets Mr. Dink and Roger Klotz. He meets Mr. Dink, the next door neighbor. Um falls in love with Patty. He gets ketchup on Roger's shoes and kinda paves the way for the entire rest of the show and being bullied mercilessly by Roger. <laughs> and we get Judy's first, like, overly dramatic thing, like, in the first couple of minutes. Right. What's kind of funny is, like, so they're moving, and the dad is moving because he got a job as a photographer at a department store. <laughs> so normally in, like, TV shows and movies, the dad's moving for, like, some big job, and this is, <laughs> like, not that a photographer is not a good job, but, you know, you don't really think of a photographer at a, like, a Sears as a job worth moving and uprooting your entire family Honey, for. Honey, this was back in the day when people were actually paid fair wages for their work. Didn't matter what the work was. What Was it fair work, fair labor in the 90s as well? Yeah, it was a lot better than it is now. Yeah, I know we haven't moved with expansion, but I thought even, or expansion, expansion inflation. I like the... <laughs> Bluffington is the bumper sticker capital of the world. <laughs> I love that. So they move and they tell Doug, hey, go get some burgers for the family. So he goes over to the neighbor, Mr. Dink, to ask for help, like where he should go get food. So Mr. Dink makes him watch this video about how amazing Bluffington is and gives all these little factoids about nematodes and the honker burger. And he goes to the honker burger and it's hilarious because... He just orders food, and the waitress or the person's just like super. She's like, "I can't understand a word that you're saying," and I'm thinking like, he has an accent that we don't like as listeners. We don't hear, but maybe they hear, and it's just no because they use a ton of slang to order their food. And Skeeter comes in. I remembered this whole episode. Did you? Yeah. I like when uh, so he orders all the food, and Skeeter comes and helps him. He's like two stinkers, no fat or whatever. And he just like says it like a 1950s diner kind of thing. And he goes, how do I order a salad, one side salad? He goes, one side salad. (laughs) No. No? No. How'd it go? He says, well, how do I order a salad from the salad bar? One salad from the salad bar. (laughs) Yeah, I guess that's how it was. You guessed that's how it was. (laughs) That's exactly how it was. I have this episode memorized. (laughs) And who was the salad for? It was for pork chop because he's a vegetarian. (laughs) It's just a phase. (laughs) It's just a phase. Oh, man. I love that they're totally chill with his dog, like, serving himself from the salad bar. <laughs> yeah, you can't have a dog at a restaurant. Well, I mean, Pork Chop's a little bit special. In the beginning of the episode, Doug introduces Pork Chop as his best friend. Yeah. <laughs> Not as a dog. And he says something about, like, how much, it's amazing how much stuff a dog can accumulate. And the movers are, like, moving, like, an entire pallet of just the dog's stuff. Well, he has that sick igloo dog house. Yeah, but he has, like, a little TV and a bed and, like everything it's like a little mini apartment i thought it was a little bit weird that doug has pork chop sleep in a dog house still but then like that thing is pretty sweet yeah well the thing it's is tricked like, out this dog has like opposable thumbs like he's constantly <laughs> carrying things he's super smart like he can semi-communicate with doug like he doesn't speak like brian and family guy but 
there are times where Doug in subsequent episodes that we watched needs to solve a problem and Porkchop will like pull on a shirt and like point to things and he can solve problems. He's super smart. Yep. He's man's best friend. I really like how in season one of this show, Skeeter has way more like Skeeterisms, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> like he honks or when he's done talking he goes hmm, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he does um skeeter is such a good guy like immediately comes and takes care of this new kid and you know looks out for him and teaches him the ropes and everything like Doug that gasps and he's like what's the matter do you swallow your gum <laughs> <laughs> he's looking out for him <laughs> um so then eventually like he said he gets ketchup on roger's shoes and roger decides he's gonna basically haze him and take him to go look for the fictional you know nematodes and it's like a snipe hunt yeah it's exactly that's exactly (laughs) what it is and what ends up happening is they're out there and they're all making fun of him well then pork chop falls in the water and gets covered in mud so he looks like a nematode and then roger decides he's going to try to find a bigger nematode and you know skeeter is like freaked out like he's a little afraid of pork chop he's like it's just pork chop he goes wow you named a nematode pork chop and got (laughs) it um but it's just it's dumb but it's really sweet and endearing like it was a fun episode and yeah you know i was really surprised at how how well it held up and i remembered each episode being too many episodes so i was kind of like oh man a half hour doug how's this gonna go <laughs> and it went fine it went just fine you know we got to establish his creepy obsession with patty mayonnaise yep like right off the bat like it's he goes, inappropriate and creepy he goes Let's just say that he, and he, i mean he totally objectifies her he doesn't know anything about her he doesn't want to meet her he's just very superficial yeah what a ding dong <laughs> <laughs> do you want to move on to the next episode um, or do you have anything else mr dink starts is very very expensive he has a, fo- a tv expensive. that folds out of a like a box like the size of a ring box right pretty crazy um I like that he establishes in this first episode that he is basically relaying his entire life into his journal. Yep. I think it made a lot of kids want to keep journals. That was a kind of a big 90s thing. Like, he kept a journal. I think Clarissa, and Clarissa explains it all, had a journal. Mm -hmm. Uh, A lot of TV shows had journals. I definitely had a journal for a very short period. I think... I think I only used it for like two weeks and then got tired of it. I have a drawer full of journals. I know you do. Plus, I had a live journal. A live journal? Live journal. Is that like the plastic one that has like a lock on it? That you don't know what live journal is. It sounds familiar. Oh my god, it's the place in the internet where we would all go to learn some coding and be dramatic. Oh. Okay, well I didn't have my own computer. (laughs) It was an online journal that other people could read sometimes. Oh, like a blog. Sort of, but not really. It's a journal. I didn't have a uh, a computer until I was like 13, 14 years old in my home, so thanks for making me feel bad. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to the next episode. So this is the first two-part episode we did, and uh, this was season one, episode seven. The first part was Doug's Cool Shoes. Mm-hmm. Tell us about this episode. This is an episode where Doug introduced us to the concept of shoe shame. Shoe shame was real, though. Shoe shame was real because I, of Doug. I don't know if it's because of Doug. I think, you know, it was already a thing. Like, obviously, we know in the 90s in Los Angeles, people were getting killed over their Jordans. Yeah, that's pretty ridiculous. And I never experienced shoe shame until my friend's parents were like, what is on your feet? And I'm like, they're shoes of holograms. Duh. I I didn't care until maybe like fifth or sixth grade. I remember somebody blatantly called me out like, those are Payless shoe store shoes. And I felt bad. Who gives a Um, And I remember in middle school, my mom got in a fight with my dad because she felt that it was important to spend a little bit more money on shoes for me because you know in middle school high school that's when you do get that little bit of a status thing with clothing so you know i didn't get like hundred dollar shoes like all my friends were getting hundred to two hundred dollar shoes but you what know, seriously yeah like my friends were getting like their crazy expensive osiris shoes and like brand new dc shoes where i was I didn't going realize to the those were that expensive some of them were Yikes. so i was going to like the dc or the vans outlet so i was still getting name brand shoes but i was getting the ones from like two years back but you know it still was better than not having vans or dcs so i i got the shoe shame no it's just weird i mean like (laughs) shoes were the only things that i got new and they were always pay less because we were actually poor and you know it really wasn't that big of a deal yeah i mean i i agree it shouldn't be a big deal but it's weird because shoes are kind of a thing like you could wear target and walmart and jc penny clothes 
but if you had okay shoes, you were fine. But I, I definitely remember getting picked on for my shoes a little bit, so I can definitely relate to this episode. I remember that I had a 1950s birthday party. So my dad got really excited about it, and he went on the hunt for saddle shoes. <laughs> so then I got saddle shoes, which was great for the party, but then, like, my shoes were saddle shoes <laughs> <laughs> for, like, a year. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> I mean, I like them well enough, but everyone was like, well, what are those? <laughs> um, so basically, in a nutshell, they're playing basketball, and Doug is on the free throw free throw i can't say that word that's a really hard word to say free throw line and they try to get in his head and they start making fun of his shoes so he misses you know he's watching tv and he just everything is talking about shoes and so he decides he's going to get the um sky davis air jets so he goes to the mall <laughs> and he's a size 16 <laughs> <laughs> way to go doug <laughs> you know what they say about big hands and big feet big shoes big shoes <laughs> <laughs> So they only have one pair left. It's a size 24. And so she literally, <laughs> they like go up to his knees and he has she to waddle. She takes t-shirts and shoves them into the toes of the shoes. Um, and so he's like, he's still going to buy them even though they don't fit. And then she goes, that's the price for w two shoes, <laughs> not one shoe or whatever it is. Or no, they're priced per shoe. Yeah. Which is ridiculous. So then Roger ends up buying them. And then, you know, there's this really nice moment where he's like sitting on the, like a park bench and he's kind of upset. And Sky Davis comes and he's like, hey, man, those are tight shoes. Like, I have shoes like that, too. And they just kind of bond on the fact that, you know, shoes shouldn't matter. Whatever you're comfortable in should be what you're wearing. So Sky Davis autographs Doug's shoes. And then he uh, he calls uh, Doug his soul buddy <laughs> and has him uh, autograph his shoes. So, you know, it's kind of like, don't worry about the shoes. It's the person in the shoes that really matters. But that's not true. You totally need to have nice shoes to fit in. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, why would he want Doug written on his shoes? I don't know. I call BS. I mean, he probably, like, wiped him off. <laughs> um, this... this is the episode where we meet Quail Man. And then the next episode, yeah, or the second part. Yep. Quail Man's great. I love Quail Man. So, the next one is called Doug to the Rescue, and it starts off with, it starts just right into it with Quail Man. Like, yeah. it's not like, oh, I have a superhero friend. Like, it, it is just, he's Quail Man. He has a belt. He has a <laughs> towel. As his cape, his underwear on the outside. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I used to put my belt on my head like that all the time Every, and run around the house. We all did. Every <laughs> single one of us did that. I had to teach other kids how to put their belts on their head like that. <laughs> uh, we all did it. I definitely remember doing that. Uh, <laughs> this is the basic plot of this episode. Anytime We ended up watching two Quail Man episodes um, inadvertently, but basically the plot of any Quail Man segment is he has an issue in the real world. And then he imagines how Quail Man would take care of it, and then he goes back to the real world and deals with it in a similar way. He goes way. back to the what? The real world. The real world. The real world. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say that funny? Yes. I'm every sure. time. I'll, I'm real, sure. world. real world. Real world. Real world. Real world. <laughs> Railroad. <laughs> <laughs> toy boat. <laughs> toy boat. Toy boat. <laughs> 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 You got me to swear on the podcast and never do that. <laughs> For every baby bug about mercy. Um. So basically in this one, <laughs> Roger is like trying to force Patty to do his homework in class for him. And, you know, the teacher keeps like, hey, shut up, you two. And then Roger keeps talking to her. So she ends up getting detention with Roger. And then Doug's like, man, that's not cool. And then he gets detention, too. And then he imagines what they would do. And basically, Roger turns into, like, a Godzilla kind of monster. <laughs> With really creepy legs. Yeah, he's, like, bottomless. <laughs> so, normally, Roger wears a white t-shirt, a leather jacket, and jeans. Well, in this, the white t-shirt is, like, the white underbelly of this giant monster. He still has a leather jacket, but he has no pants. Like, <laughs> so, it's like he's Donald Ducky. Ambiguous absence of pants. <laughs> it's weird. I think it's because the legs are so shapely. <laughs> It's weird. And he's like up on a building, so it's all just presented. <laughs> it's awkward. Um, um, but I love that. I love that in this first time that you see Quail Man, Doug is like super in his head about it. And he is sort of swapping between reality and Quail Man. Whereas like later episodes, he's just kind of drawing it out and like meditating on it. And then he comes back to reality. He's like, here's what I'm going to do. In this episode, you get these moments where Doug is in the zone oh and he God. actually kind of thinks that he's Quail Man. So, like, Doug normally just has these kind of 
pinpoint eyes. They're just little black ovals. Right. But when he's thinking as Quail Man, he gets like these James McAvoy eyes. <laughs> James McAvoy <laughs> eyes. <laughs> that's that's a good. That's intense. a really good way to describe it. That's exactly like his Professor Xavier. Yes, they get big and intense, and because it's just Doug like thinking his Quail Man. Whereas when he's Quail Man and he's doing the the eyes, they get little spirals in them, and then they shoot lasers or whatever. Just like hypno beans. But instead, we get this amazing scene where it's after detention. Roger's got beef with Doug because he punched him in the face on accident. On accident <laughs> in detention. And so then he decides he's going to like psych him out. So he's like, over here. Now I'm over here. But he's got the James McAvoy eyes the whole time. <laughs> he, he just, just keeps... creeps him out. <laughs> he creeps him the hell out because he actually thinks that he's doing something as Quail Man and like being too fast or you know spry for and also him. hypnotizing him <laughs> <laughs> and he thinks he's hypnotizing him meanwhile skeeter and patty are like oh he's psyching him out <laughs> really he's just being creepy AF. <laughs> he's just being a little <laughs> on a little the spectrum <laughs> <laughs> but rogers is like i don't know if i want to hit a special ed student <laughs> terrible oh man <laughs> it's just stupid this was my note doug does quail eyes cat went crazy <laughs> She was laughing so loud. (laughs) (laughs) I know. (laughs) Are you okay? Fine. Let's go. All right. So (laughs) the next one we picked is uh, we really wanted to do one of the musical episodes. So we wanted to hear either Banging on a Trash Can or I Need More Allowance. So we literally Googled I Need More Allowance. And it told us to pick this episode. So we did it. Luckily, it paid off. But we did season two, episode nine. The first part was called "On Doug on the Trail. And he's like, you know, a boy scout in this one. Um, this one was all right. He's this a, was he's a bluff scout. Bluff scout. <laughs> eh, same thing as boy scout. Uh, this was probably my least favorite segment out of the ones we watched. But yeah, it, was still it wasn't good. as funny. But basically, in a nutshell... They're going on a camping trip with, you know, the Bluff Scouts. Doug accidentally drops their navigational computer and it breaks. So <laughs> Mr. Dink has to go back and get another one. So they put it's a run- massive computer. <laughs> it's like a like the old portable Mac that you had in like a suitcase kind of thing. Right. So Roger's put in charge because he's the most senior Bluff Scout. He and- didn't have a suitcase and he just had a handle on the top. Okay. Whatever. God. Jesus. <laughs> 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 so Roger's put in charge and he's just running like a tyrant and he, you know, he's making up rules in, sp- in like the card games and he's treating all the others like slaves and he's cheating and he's eating all the food. So Doug and Skeeter decide that they're going to go look for Mr. Dink because he's been gone for like five hours and Roger's like, you can't go look until he's been gone for 12 hours. So even like make sure he's good and dead, right? <laughs> so even his like his cronies were like, "Yeah, go ahead and go, Doug. Like we're not gonna we're not gonna tell Roger that you went." So they go and they use all their wilderness skills, and they ultimately find a cave with a bear in it, which is kind of crazy. I know. And at first, I thought like I misremembered. As soon as they go into the cave and they hear like a growling sound, I thought it was gonna be Mister Dink snoring, like he took a nap in the cave. Mm-hmm. But then they run into a tree and Mr. Dink's, like, naked in the tree. <laughs> Wearing leaves. Wearing leaves, like, just a little bush. And, uh... What happened to his clothes? He says that he fell into the, um, the river and they laid him out to dry. And then right. that's when he saw the bear and ran into the tree. Right. So, they end up going back and Roger's like, hey, we're glad you're back, you know. I, I did okay. And while he's in a tree and everyone's yelling at him trying to do a coup... And so he goes, well, it sounds like you ate all the food, so you're not going to need to eat. So I'm just going to order pizza. And then Roger's kind of serving them. He's kind of getting his comeuppance for being a ding dong. Yep. A dingus. Save the day. Save the day. This one went pretty quick. There wasn't any real. It's pretty cut and dry. Yeah. Mr. I... Dink was wearing leaves. Didn't yeah. have to see Dink's dink. <laughs> dink, dink. Dink, dink. Dink, 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 dink. Sorry. <laughs> you should be. <laughs> all right. So the next part was Doug meets Robobone and this was another Quail Man episode <laughs> but we also got to see the beats. We did get to see the beats. Uh, so basically in a nutshell this one uh Doug is elected as the chairman of student activities or something like that and he decides he's going to get the beats to play at the school and they're basically like a combo of the Beatles and the Stones. So he he writes this like giant letter that takes up like an entire bleacher mails it out and then he gets a fax. <laughs> <The> fax. <laughs> he gets a fax saying that they're willing to come and 
Mr. Bone is like, nope, they're not wholesome. And like, you should get like a yodeling group to come out. And he's <laughs> like, wait, that's your yodeling group. And then he just, like you said, I just hit the microphone. Um, like you said earlier in the, the previous one, the uh, he changes how he interacts with Quailman, where he literally just, you see him drawing, he goes into his head, and then he comes back and like, this is what we're going to do. Right. And so he has this whole thing where Robobone is unstoppable, and then he just kind of negotiates with them, and that's basically what it is. It's like, well, what if we op- let the yodelers open for the beats, and then they get they all get their cake, and they all get to eat it. Yep. It's great. Yep. I didn't realize that there was actually lyrics to I Need More Allowance, I other than the chorus. I thought it was just, I need more allowance, yo, lay you. <laughs> Why? Because I do. Oh, well. I thought that's all, but there's a whole, like, verse, too. Yeah. <laughs> and talking about buying CDs and stuff like that. All kinds of stuff. All kinds all of stuff. All kinds of stuff. I've been working. He's like, I've been raking leaves, cleaning the bathroom. I deserve this <laughs> or something like that. Entitlement. Basically, our life back then. Yep. I mean, it was a trade system. It was. What What was your your uh, chore that you had to do for allowance? We did everything. I mean, we we had like a calendar that we rotated. So like Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday was like my day to sweep and like mop the kitchen, and then like one, and then there was other days where we had a really terrible dishwasher that didn't get all the deposits out. So we had one person who had to like, like rinse off the plates and then then the glasses before we used them. So that was like a night. Too. it was weird we had like a calendar yeah we had a calendar rotated. too but we do whatever mom we have to do we, we would just do whatever my mom told us whenever so sweeping mopping cleaning the bathroom breaking the yard setting the table cocaine I mean, yeah you know a little drug running here and there just kidding Could, the, the sherwoods did not do drug running my parents have never tried cocaine they told me i asked sure <laughs> Um, I've seen your dad's hair. <laughs> he partied in the seventies and the eighties. That was an afro. <laughs> Back to death. I'm gonna edit this out because your parents <laughs> actually listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna edit that entire part out. <laughs> oh my god! I can't keep going. Um, any, I mean, we, we hit all the episodes. My um, main note for this last, uh, the Robobone episode was you come to the scene with, um, with Patty Mayonnaise talking to BB. What's BB's last name? That wasn't BB that she was talking to. It was somebody else. Because BB is the skinny one with the beak shaped head. BB's the one with the ponytail straight up. Yeah. Oh, I thought she was talking to her. No. Anyway, come up on the scene with Patty Mayonnaise talking to someone in the hallway at school and she said, so you better make a hard copy before you reboot that thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know what you're saying. I also like when, um, like, basically, because Quail Man really doesn't have any other power. Was, he doesn't have any powers other than, like, flight and hypno beams. Like, they, in the first episode that we had with him, they even mentioned he doesn't even have, like, super strength, which is, you know, a key superpower that most superheroes would have. So he's, like, defeated by Robobone. He doesn't know what to do. And so they start yodeling him to death. And he's like, can't you yodel in key? And he's like, what is this, a trick? He goes, no, it's just a superhero suggestion. And then the <laughs> yodelers become like on Rolling Stone magazine and they become the biggest act in the world. It's just dumb. But it's fun. I I don't have anything else for the actual episodes we talked about. Um, I think we should just go straight to the verdict. Did, did this ruin your childhood? No, I want to watch the rest of it. I do too. And we've said that for several things that we've watched and we haven't, but I actually feel like this is an easy one to actually go and do. It was hilarious. It was. I was li- like, I liked this better than Hey Arnold, and I really liked Hey Arnold. Right? Uh, it was just so simple and wholesome. It is. It's simple. It's wholesome. It's not overwhelming. And I feel like we missed so much. Like, we didn't see any... Judith was only in one episode, so we didn't really see any of her dramatic stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, we didn't see... We didn't see Banging on a Trash Can, nope. which I really wanted to see. We didn't really see any real interactions with Patty Mayonnaise. Or the parents. Or the parents. Uh, so, yeah, I, I really want to watch more. Yeah. I think it'll I think it'll hold up. There's more enjoyable stuff to be had. And it was really fun watching these episodes and then realizing that I actually did kind of have them memorized. That's still. funny. <laughs> um, so what like we... when he slips on um, when he slips on the ketchup packet in the pilot episode and he thinks that he accidentally squirted patty with ketchup and she's like you have wonderful aim and i still remembered that interaction it's ridiculous that's really funny um 
yeah, I, go and watch this. Um, it's really good. It's on Hulu, so you don't have to go and find it on YouTube with bad quality. Like, it's readily available, so go and watch it. Worth it. Worth it. So, Katrina. Uh-huh. What are we going to be watching for our next episode? We're watching Pretty Woman next Bow, time. Now, now, now. Even though it's not a kid's movie, we all watched it because apparently now, now. none of our parents really gave two no, poops no, no, about no, no, propriety no, no, back no, in the day. No, 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 no. Yeah, we're going to watch Pretty Woman. Yeah. That was a movie really about good. a prostitute. Yeah. Wholesome kids movie. And Richard movies. Gere. Don't even say Cheerful. it. Stop! <laughs> that did not happen. You know who came up with that uh, rumor? I do. Sylvester Stallone. Good for him. Uh-huh. I just have so much more respect for him now. Well. I'm just kidding. That's terrible. You shouldn't spread rumors about people, guys. It's terrible. Anyway, where can our listeners find you, Katrina? I'm all over the internet at Katrina Ossity. Check out her YouTube. Yep. And uh, you can check out everything that's MDX Pods related at mdxpods.com. We're on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, please listen to our other podcast, Remake Rewind. And uh, like this episode on whatever you like it on. You can rate us on Facebook, rate us on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher. Help out the show. But other than that, thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.